Hi, my name is Alyssa and I'm a PhD student at Virginia Tech. Today I'm going to share some of my work on the histotripsy treatment of pancreatic cancer, specifically investigating how histotripsy can release immunostimulatory molecules and promote anti-tumor immunity. Histotripsy is a non-invasive focused ultrasound therapy that generates a predictable capitation cloud at the focal point generating precise margins. During treatment, histotripsy is guided by real-time ultrasound imaging, resulting in precise ablation and immediate feedback. Recent work has not only shown that histotripsy can modulate the immune system in various cancers, but it is also starting to develop a complete picture of cellular and systemic immunity. However, there are still questions left as to how histotripsy affects all areas of the immune system, and specifically how these changes occur in pancreatic cancer. The first question for this study is, how does the release of immune-stimulating molecules by histotripsy compare to other ablation modalities? To answer this question, we utilize an in vitro system. We designed a custom histotripsy cell ablation setup that allowed us to generate a bubble cloud from a 1 MHz transducer within 1 milliliter of a cell suspension. To compare the results of histotripsy to other ablation modalities, we cultured cells and aliquoted 10 million cells in 1 milliliter of PBS suspensions for each treatment. We then ablated our samples with either histotripsy, irreversible electroporation, thermal ablation, or cryoablation. For each of these three additional modalities, we utilized established in vitro methods. We also compared more complete ablations, where more than 90% of cells were ablated, as well as partial ablations, where less than 30% were ablated. We found thermal ablation has the lowest release of proteins in DNA. Given that high temperatures can denature proteins, DNA, and other dams, this lower magnitude of release is likely to reduce the immunostimulatory power of thermal ablation. On the other hand, histogypsy released proteins in DNA at a level that was greater or comparable to that of non-thermal ablation modalities. Beyond establishing that dams are released, we wanted to establish that potential antigens in DNA released were intact and identifiable. With Western blot, we found beta-actin and transfected hemagglutinin antigen to be more easily identified in non-thermal ablation modalities. Following the same trend, ethidine bromide gel electrophoresis also showed that histotripsy and cryoablation released the largest strands of identifiable nucleotides. From this in vitro work, we have shown that histotripsy in pancreatic cancer releases protein and DNA that can serve as damps and potential antigens. While these results are promising that histotripsy can be immunostimulatory in the treatment of pancreatic cancer, ongoing work is continuing to investigate the mechanisms underlying this process using our in vitro setup. In addition, we are investigating whether histotripsy can stimulate a robust immune response to pancreatic cancer in vivo. To do this, we utilize the PANO2 murine model. At the beginning of the study, mice were subcutaneously injected with PANO2 cells suspended in major gel and then treated with histotripsy when their tumors reached approximately 0.6 centimeters in diameter. Mice were then euthanized immediately after treatment, one day later, and at survival points. Samples were collected from the animals for ablation and immunological analysis. For the treatment of the murine tumors, we used our custom-built small animal 1 MHz system that includes a coaxial-aligned ultrasound imaging probe. This real-time monitoring has allowed us to see the bubble cloud form within the tumor and monitor treatment progression. Using histotripsy to treat the PANO2 tumors with negative margins, we were able to achieve a 43% reduction in the measured tumor diameters compared to untreated tumors, while H&E histology showed that the targeted tissues were fully ablated. Looking further, defining progression as the point where the tumor diameter exceeded 20% of the average diameter on treatment day, histotripsy increased progression-free survival by 24 days and additionally increased overall survival by eight days. With this model, we have also found that histotripsy treatment increases anti-tumor T cell population. At seven days after treatment, there was a significant increase in helper T cells within the treated tumors and a notable increase in CD8 T cells at 14 days. Additionally, there is a significant decrease in the anti-inflammatory T regulatory cells at 14 days after treatment. The long-term decrease in T regulatory cells, along with the decrease in macrophages and myeloid-derived suppressor cells, indicates a potential shift to a hotter, more inflammatory, anti-cancer tumor microenvironment. Based on the work that I have shared today, results show that histogypsy releases immune-stimulating molecules comparable to IRE and cryoablation. 
From the initial in vivo work, we also showed that hesitripsy treatment of pancreatic tumors can shift the tumor microenvironment to be more anti-tumor. While this work is promising, more studies need to be done to determine the full extent of systemic immune system involvement. I would like to thank everyone who has helped on this project, and of course, thank the Focus Ultrasound Foundation for the opportunity to present.